Hello, everyone, and welcome to our A to J Author new user webinar. This is Jessica Frank, A to J Author's project manager. Today, we're going to talk about user experience enhancements. These are significant changes that we've made to the A to J Author interface in the past year or so to upgrade the experience for your end users. None of them are what are called breaking changes in that old interviews won't work anymore. Instead, there are additional features that can be added to your interview based on author and user preference. On our agenda today, we'll cover the advanced navigation panel, the reduced user interface, the A to J DAT accessibility preview. The A to J DAT is our document assembly tool that builds out the backend template, and then tabbed question design editor. Finally, leaving time for Q&A or community discussion if you have anything that you wanna talk about with us. So the first feature to talk about is the Advanced Navigation Panel. We worked with Michigan Advocacy Program on a TIG Technology Innovation Grant um, last year to add a couple enhancements to A to J Author. This is the first one which we released in December of 2021. We've had requests for years to allow end users to jump back into their interviews from the point in which they exited and also for them to be able to better see how their interviews are structured and to navigate around the interview easier. This advanced navigation panel does that. Every interview now comes equipped with the advanced navigation panel, and the author doesn't have to do anything in order to have it available for the end users. The advanced end user navigation panel allows end users to more easily navigate their way through an A to J guided interview. It allows end users to preview upcoming questions and to jump around to previously visited pages. This feature also allows end users who are reloading their saved answer files to begin again at the last page that they left the interview from, rather than starting over from the beginning of the interview when they resume. When the panel is opened, the end user is shown their progress within the interview. The current page they are on is indicated with a circle with a dot in it and the text that is in bold in. For example, in the screenshot, step zero, question one is the question that the end user is on. They're also shown pages that are available to preview, which are in italics and a slightly lighter text color with a circle without um, the dot in the center of it, like the screenshot, step zero, question two. By default, the navigation panel is hidden, but can be opened by the end user via the show navigation panel at the bottom of the interview. Authors also have the option to have the panel open automatically by default, and you can select that option in your interview when you're creating it in the About Tabs layout section, which I'll show you in a few slides. Pages available to preview are limited to those up to the next breaking point. So we call the breaking point any pages that have required questions, logic before or logic after. If there is a fork in the road, the end user is stopped because oftentimes there are different paths and different questions that the end user will experience based on which of those options they select. So we create that breaking point. We don't wanna show the end user all available questions on all available paths within an interview because some interviews are quite extensive and have lots of different paths based on the user's answers. So we show them the path that is available to them up into that breaking point. Now, some A to J guided interviews are gonna allow end users to see many questions in advance, and others are gonna have very few showing depending on the content of the pages and how many breaking points there are in the interview. The navigation panel allows end users to skip ahead to preview pages, so to check to see um, if they want, if there's information that they need further along in the interview or to sort of see kind of what the questions are, they can preview those pages. However, a warning icon as shown in the screenshot here will appear in the navigation panel indicating that they have skipped and they will not be able to enter any data into those, previ into those previewed pages until they actually hit them in the normal path of navigation. So the end user can see in this screenshot on step one, question three, I skipped ahead and previewed step one, question four, so it has the little warning icon with the exclamation point indicating um, that it is a preview or not uh, a, a real quote unquote question. And that if I want to actually complete that interview or that question path, um, I need to go back to step one, question three and go through the normal branching. When users go back to previously answered pages and change their answers, it can cause a butterfly effect for future pages. 
So by that I mean that changing an answer in a previous question can change the path the user is then taken down subsequently. Many times there is logic or branching that is determined by the user's answer. So they go back and change an answer in the past, they may then find themselves on a different path than they were originally on. The navigation panel warns the end user that they have changed their answers and also updates the user's next question's path. This alert allows the end user to restore their previous answers and continue on that first path that they were on if they want. It's just another safety measure to help end users move correctly through an interview and know what they're getting into when they click around in an interview. Here's the About tabs layout section that I mentioned with the checkbox for authors to select if they want the navigation panel open by default. Authors can see what the navigation panel looks like to the end users in preview mode of author. So we've created a toggle in the debug panel that allows authors to toggle between the debug panel and the advanced navigation panel when you're in preview mode. If you're new to authoring, preview mode is a as close as possible representation of what the interview will look like to your end user with additional um, debugging and um, saving answer files and testing capabilities built in for you as an author. So when you're in A to J author and you are previewing, you can see what the interview looks like to end users, but you can also open up what is called the debug panel, which is what is uh, in the screenshot on the right. And it shows you the list of variables in your interview, any values that have been currently stored based on uh, your testing that you've done and the progression or the logic and how you've moved through the, through the interview in the script pot portion at the bottom of the screenshot on the right. So the new addition here with the advanced navigation panel is the toggle that's in this upper right hand corner and you can click that and it will switch to the advanced navigation panel so you can see what the end user would experience with the navigation panel open. Um, the navigation panel, as I mentioned, comes by default in all A to J guided interviews. You don't have to do anything in your interview to take advantage of this feature. The only author change that is required is if you want the navigation panel open in your interview by default. Then you need to check this box, republish your interview uh, to wherever it's hosted, and re-update any links if you need to, to, um, to link to the correct interview. The only other caveat is that users who created answer files in older versions of the A to J viewer, so pre-December 2021, and then want to reload them in the A to J viewer with this advanced end user navigation panel are not going to have the full user experience because the mechanism for tracking the user's visited pages and showing them the preview and what's upcoming um, was is stored in the answer file and that was added with the navigation panel code. So any old answer files don't have that history of where the user had been, but any answer files created after um, December 2021 on a2j.org and I believe sometime in the spring of 2022 on LHI will have uh, the, the user's history that is needed by the navigation panel. You can check out this new this feature immediately in your interviews on in your authoring account on a to j on a to j author.org in preview mode and all interviews that are hosted on a to j.org and LHI. You are self-hosting. You need to update your viewer um, to at least the December 2021 version. And we recommend um, we have versions from February and June of 2022 for you to take advantage of as well. If you are self-hosting, make sure to subscribe to the RSS feed on our GitHub repository, which is github.com slash ccali slash a to j viewer to ensure that you are getting the latest versions of the code when we push that. With the new navigation panel comes our next feature to talk about, the reduced user interface. This option allows end users to run an entire interview in mobile view, but at desktop size. So some authors have requested an interface for A to J guided interviews that removes the avatars, the courthouse, and all of the path imagery, all of the, um, the pictures essentially with our interview interface. This is similar to the mobile view that you would that an end user would see if their screen was phone or small tablet sized. This reduced user interface is available by selecting the use reduced interface option under the about tab, the layout section. If I go back a slide, it's right above the navigation panel open by default. So if you always want your end users to experience your interview 
like this, check the Use Reduced uh, Interface option. It will apply to all users regardless of the size of their device. So the screenshot here was taken on a, uh, a computer, a desktop. Um, so it is a large mobile version and all the fields are correspondingly long, similar to um, how they would be resized on a mobile device. Oh, there's a screenshot of the Use Reduced Interface. The third feature to talk about here is the A to J DAT, the Document Assembly Tool Accessibility Preview. This is part of the work we have been doing for the past couple years to increase the accessibility of our A to J guided interviews for end users. We have uh, done work since 2018 to bring the A to J viewer into compliance with WCAG, so Web Content Accessibility Guidelines. They're standards across the web for how to make your content as accessible as possible. And we've worked for the past couple of years to bring the A to J viewer to AA and AAA compliance, which are the highest uh, two levels. And in the, the last year, we worked with Atlanta Legal Aid Services on a TIG to add some of that accessibility work that we've done to the A to J viewer to the templates themselves. One of the parts of that is to give the A to J text templates an HTML preview page that is screen readable. This work includes a document preview button that appears whenever there is text templates associated with the interviews. So you will see here that you have documents that can be previewed, open document preview. And when they click on that, the end user then is given the option to see, quote unquote, with their screen reader, what the assembled document would look like. Um, PDFs, generally, it, this, is, this occurs before the document is actually assembled and becomes a PDF because PDFs can be particularly problematic for users with screen readers. And so we've created this breakpoint to allow them to review the document before it actually becomes a PDF and becomes sort of a black box. This only works with A to J text templates created with the A to J DAT, our document assembly tool. So if you're not familiar, the A to J DAT has text templates and PDF templates, which I'll talk about optimizing those in just a second. But this, this feature, the document preview, only works with text templates. Um, and it only works again with the A to J DAT templates. It does not work with hot docs templates or um, any other document assembly tool that you may be integrating with A to J author because uh, the HTML preview is the way a, the A to J document assembly tool works is that it creates this HTML preview before the document is assembled anyway in our workflow. And so we can control it and basically take it out and show it to the end user before it becomes the PDF. When answer files with a guided interview are passed to another software tool like Hotdocs to build out the actual uh, document for the end user, we don't have any control over what that document looks like or how it's assembled because we pass it to another software tool. And so we can't do the same preview uh, with Hotdocs. So again, only available with A to J text templates. As part of this work, though, we realize that that is not where the majority of work is happening or documents are being created, and that many documents start as a PDF and are assembled uh, or created um, automated on top of that, either with the A to J PDF templates or with the Hot Docs Automator. Um, and so we created a best practices guide for automating and creating accessible PDF templates. A lot of that relies on many of the features within Adobe Pro to review and optimize the underlying PDF before you actually automate on top of it. A lot of the problem with the PDF is it's essentially like a picture and um, the screen readers don't know what the different parts of the template actually are. It's just sort of a, a blank box or a black box. So if you have Adobe Pro and you have access to it and you follow our best practices guide, there are a lot of tools that can be built in to, to mark up the document for screen readers. And Adobe does a great job of doing a lot of that automatically. So the, the best practices guide applies to all PDFs, not necessarily just PDF templates or those used with A to J. Um, if you have PDFs on your website, you can opt, optimize them. Um, if you're using Hot Docs or another tool with an underlying PDF, highly recommend checking out the best practices guide and um, optimizing your templates with the Adobe Pro tools. Um, you can add in a little toolbar into your Adobe and it basically walks through the accessibility wizard for you. You can find the best practices guide on our website here at the URL, or you can go to a to j author.org under the learn tab and it's the bottom of our authoring guide. 
So our authoring guide is essentially the software manual for A to J author, and at the very bottom of it is this document, the best practices guide for creating accessible PDF templates. The final thing to talk about today is the tabbed question design editor. So we're trying to optimize the authoring experience in addition to these previously mentioned end user enhancements. We understand authors approach the authoring process differently, and so we're trying to create ways for to author for everyone that are comfortable and intuitive for whatever your authoring type is. One example of that is the map enhancements that we released a couple of years ago that allow authors to quickly draw out your interview in a flowchart fashion. So you can drag and drop and add uh, little modals that create pages and you can um, quickly knock out the outline of your, of your interview. And this new tabbed question design editor is in that same vein. It allows authors to view the different sections of the question design editor, which is the place where the bulk of your authoring happens, in a tabbed format instead of the current or the original scroll down layout. So this next little GIF is just showing, um, GIF is just showing uh, the difference between the scroll option or clicking to the tabbed view and we toggle back and forth. This is the original scroll version. This is the tab version where you handle each component of the interview within a set uh, parameter. Whichever you prefer um, for your authoring experience, you can work with within the interview itself. If you have questions during the month between our, and our new user webinars, always feel free to reach out to me, jessica at cali.org. You can send suggestions for trainings. We also have a feature request and technical assistance requests on our website under the about section if you want to send those in anonymously um, it's up to you thank you for attending this webinar and i will see you all in may happy april